It's time for another Docker release. We do this every couple of months to bring you new features and fix bugs. This one, well, it's big. We're moving into double digits. This is Docker 1.10. In this release, we've made some huge steps forward with container security. Also, networking is getting even better, and we've added in new tools and features for sysadmins. And to support these changes, we have a new compose file format. OK, let's take this piece by piece and start with Docker Engine. There's some great new security features that we've added to Docker Engine. We've added container seccom profiles for defining complex security policies for syscalls. We've also brought user namespacing out of experimental. And we've added in an authorization plugin system for doing complex access control. And now we have content addressable IDs for images. Lastly, we've added in a option to create temporary file systems inside containers so that it's easier to run your containers with a read-only file system for improved security. Networking is getting even better. As of 1.10, the Docker daemon has an embedded DNS server. Containers running on a user-defined container network will, by default, use the default DNS for a built-in service discovery. Links enable users to assign a host name for a specific container. You can now also give a container multiple host names that are accessible across the whole network. And we've added support for custom IP addresses to containers in the network. Last, we added support for links to user-defined networks for, to define relationships between containers and aliases for their names. We've added some features that make Docker easier to use for sysadmins. You can now update resource constraints on containers without having to stop them. Similarly, you can reload your daemon configuration without restarting the daemon. You can also now send your logs to Splunk. And finally, you can set container um, constraints for disk I.O. inside containers. In 1.10, we have improved push and pull performance and reliability, and as always, we've fixed a bunch of bugs. For more details, check out the release notes. The link is in the description below. We have a few new features in Swarm as well. We've got experimental support for rescheduling containers when a node fails, and we have better node management. Now you see errors from nodes that failed to join the cluster. We've also got new guides for getting started with Swarm with real-world use cases. Check out the links in the description below. With the changes in Docker Compose 1.6, you can define a powerful multi-container application with all the components you need using a simple YAML file. And we also have a new events command for monitoring events for your application. Your old Compose files will continue to work, but it's easy to convert to the new, more flexible and powerful format. For more info, check out the Compose video and the changelog in the description below. All right, last let's talk about Docker Machine. We've added some new features to make using Docker Machine even easier. In particular, we've added a Docker Machine provision command to rerun provisioning on hosts where it has failed or the configuration has drifted. Swarm masters are now created with replication enabled by default, and we have enhanced virtualization detection. Also, AWS credentials can now be automatically read from config file, and a default VPC is chosen when one is not specified explicitly. That's a lot of great features. If you want to hear more about them, check out the online meetup in the description below. And of course, everything is fully documented in docs.docker.com. And if you have any questions, check out the Docker forums where lots of great people help each other.